Hello Racketfest. Uh, my name is Oliver Caldwell. Uh, I'm a Clojure programmer by trade and I have been for a few years now. Um, I moved into that from front-end development, so I've had quite a journey from lots of JavaScript to lots of Clojure, uh, with the odd dabbling of Racket and other Lisps in between. Um, I am the author of Conjure and Aniseed, which are a set of plugins uh, for um, developing and uh, developing plugins for NeoVim, as well as configuring your NeoVim, but also talking to other languages. So you can see here the list of supported languages by Conjure right now, uh, started with Clojure, but has spread out to various other Lisps over time. Uh, and that continues to grow, Racket being one of them. Uh, all of these are different uh, transports and uh, different backends for uh, a common user experience. Um, so Racket is over standard IO, just over the shell, um, whereas Clojure is over nREPL. If somebody ever wants to implement a new transport for Racket, they can do, either in a third-party plugin or as a pull request. Uh, it's all very extensible. Um, they just have a common interface for how these, these clients should work. Um, so what I want to show you is how Conjure works inside NeoVim, NeoVim specifically, uh, with Racket. So I can open up a Racket file. So sandbox, there we go. Uh, I can evaluate this buffer and I get all my results. I can evaluate individual forms. I can evaluate, say, a form inside here or the root form. The root form gets me an empty result because evaluating this gives you nothing. It's just defining a function. I can evaluate that defined function. <clears throat> I can evaluate prints. Um, I can replace forms. So uh, comma E exclamation mark was eval and replace with comma being my local leader. Uh, you can configure all these things. There's a lot of configuration. So I have an eval and replace. I have eval marked form. So I can do uh, MF. So I've set a mark here. I can go to that mark with F. That's a normal Vim thing. I can do now comma EMF. And I've evaluated the form at that mark without moving. Uh, so my cursor can be anywhere. Comma EMF. And it evaluates that. Uh, which is pretty handy. I can go into another uh, racket file. And I can evaluate this file. I can evaluate this sub expression. Um, <clears throat> I can actually put a mark here. So let's do a capital mark now. So on, on the add, let's do comma uh, M capital F. That allows you to, that's a mark that goes across function boundaries. So now if I do backtick F, that's, you see, it's taken me to this line. So what I can do from over in this file, I can close my other buffer. We can evaluate the form in that other buffer by doing comma em capital F. And we got 30. You see it evaluated the add. And it, the, the log tells us there in the corner that we evaluated the marked form capital F. Um, so it allows you to kind of eval at a distance, uh, which is very, very useful for triggering um, like function calls or whatever across file boundaries. Now this window in the top right, uh, this is what I call the HUD. Um, it will kind of move around to make space for you. So if you have two files open, you're evaluating over here. You see it popped up at the bottom. So it tries to stay out of the way. You can configure this. You can have it pop up uh, at the bottom of the screen, take up the full width, uh, the top, take up the full width, uh, any percentage, left, right. It's all very configurable. Uh, you just got to go looking through the documentation. Um, but the neat thing about this, in my opinion, is that if I do comma LV, log vertical split, uh, we get the log here, and every evaluation I've done ends up in this file, and it is just a file, it's a temporary file that we can edit and modify. It's just a normal buffer. You can write this file if you want to, if you want to save your notes. Um, and the, the beauty of it is, like, we can just keep... I mean, I'm only doing math here, it's not particularly impressive, but we can just keep doing stuff here. Uh, we can keep adding to it. And this interface is the common interface that all Conjure clients have. So I've kind of shown you everything you want to know with Racket right now. We can run things. Uh, I can stop the REPL. I can start the REPL. Now we have a fresh REPL. Cool. Hooray. Um, but I want to show you quickly. Uh, let's do another client. Let's do Scheme. Go into the Scheme, uh, scheme Sandbox. OK, now we're on MIT Scheme. And we have the exact same uh, behavior, right? I can do all the same mappings. Everything works the same. 
Um, so let's go into a closure file. Let's go into the closure sandbox, start a closure REPL. Hopefully this comes up fairly quickly. Uh huh. Yep, should be good. And I can say eval this file and it will do all of its magic when the mrepl port is there. You up yet? There we go. And we have a session. All the sessions are named after different dogs and cat breeds. Uh, so we get the whole file evaluated. I can eval stuff. Um, in languages like this, where we have extensive support, we also get all this sort of thing. We get completion. Um, not all languages have that. And you can add it to any language. All Kanji clients support asynchronous completion. Um, and there's a bunch of things that integrate Kanji's completion into various UI plugins and completion plugins. So they all talk to each other. It's just all about implementing a uh, a um, a client for your, your given language and then upgrading that client over time. Uh, and improvements I make to the Kanji UX, like the overall... Um, the overall shell, so this whole thing, the whole log experience and the HUD, that carries over to every client. So this is how I worked out how to create a kind of fulcrum for the Lisp community. I wanted to create something that um, solved a lot of the interaction problems um, and provided a, a place for you to implement some hooks to very quickly add support for lesser known Lisps. So Highlang is a Lisp uh, like basically compiles to Python. That's quite niche, but now they have full support here. Like Janet Lang, I, I'm not gonna go start up my Janet REPL, but I added Janet support. And now we have a Janet editor and it's linked to from the Janet homepage. So all these lisps that are originally a bit too niche to have this kind of interactive tooling get to benefit from, yeah, it's not connecting because I don't have a server up. Um, they get to benefit from having like dedicated tooling for their language, um, which I hope is quite useful and pretty neat. Um, and I think kind of the, this is all cool. Like we get uh, interactive tooling for all these languages, but I think the best thing for me is what it's written in. So if I LS the top level of, of Kunja source code, cause I'm in Kunja source code and I develop Kunja with itself, I, I interactively develop with itself. So if I break the eval support, I can't eval to fix the eval support, which is a fun chicken and egg problem to have with your software. Um, you'll notice that there's this fennel directory. So we have a fennel source code here, which is a Lisp that compiles to Lua. And we have compiled Lua output in here. Uh, and the only Vim script we have is this single file. Let's do bat, bat plugin. That's it, that's all the Vim script. That That's it, there's nothing else. Um, so if I go into fennel, let's say, log, here's the source code of the plugin for all of the log support. And you can see the um, the sponsored by is here. And let's say um, loved by, comma er, evaluate that form, uh, log reset, and there you go. We just, oh, no, it didn't actually do it. <laughs> uh, log reset. Loved by, there we go. Martin Klebsch, thank you very much for sponsoring me. Um, so yeah, I can I can change Conja on the fly using itself uh, by editing this Lisp. And this Lisp is compiling to Lua um, like as I, as I work with it. And the extra layer on, on this cake, the cherry on this cake of lispy interaction and working with itself is that um, fennel doesn't have any support of modules it's just plain lua it doesn't have any support of def once and defin and private methods and public methods um, i added all of those those are macros that i wrote using uh well those are macros that i wrote in this tool the sister project aniseed um let's just go into the readme um so aniseed is the plugin that I use to compile Fennel to Lua and provide kind of the bridge between Fennel, lua Lispy things and NeoVim and to make that a bit more seamless. Um, so between Aniseed and Kanja, you have these two projects, one for performing the interaction, one for performing the evaluations um, that work together to provide a platform to build 
more lispy plugins on. Uh, so it's kind of this this three-way tangled um, uh, self-reinforcing loop. As I make each one better, it makes working on each one easier. Um, so I hope this has been an interesting little taste uh, into the NeoVim Lispy world, and I hope you have a look. Uh, please um, take a look around, maybe contribute some more language support if you if you want to. If you have a niche Lisp that you love that doesn't have good editor support and you love Vim, come and add it. It's not that difficult. Bit of copy and paste, um, bit of editing here and there, and you'll have a client up and running. Um, yeah, and the only other thing I'll show you is that this spreads outside of just plugins. This is the only Vim in my entire Vim config. This magic thing here, Aniseed Env, means that all of my Vim config is also written in Fennel. So I don't write Vim script anymore. I don't write Lua. All of my Vim work is done in this language, and it's lovely. Uh, <laughs> I I highly recommend giving it a go if Vim script and Lua have put you off of using Vim. Um, we get a lot of the benefits of Emacs's Lispy world, kind of, um, but with the simplicity and minimalism of a, of a naked or a small Vim install. Okay, well that's, that's probably all my time used up. Um, I hope I get to take some questions now, and I hope you're all really interested and excited about this. Um, yeah, I hope you have a, a great rest of your conference. I'll speak to you soon.